Welcome to Emily's garden. Come on out today. Welcome to Emily's garden. Just a snap away. To Emily's garden, just a snap. Away. Welcome to my garden. It's a place where dreams are cultivated. I have a great show planned for you today, all about your gardens and how you can use the fruits of your labor. I thought I would start by making some great flower arrangements for you today. We've done some of these before, but I'm going to recap them. Any type of vase is going to change dramatically what you do, as well as the flowers that you use. Your vegetable garden is a great place to grow flowers for cutting, making it even that much more beautiful. And furthermore, Cutting the flowers won't ruin the appearance of your homegrown garden overall. But don't forget, foliage can play an important role in arrangements. Ferns, ornamental grasses, hostas, and other leaves make wonderful additions to any bouquet. I just went through my gardens. There are so many different things that you can use. You can see that these different vases would lend themselves, if you use your imagination, to all kinds of beautiful pieces. So we're just going to do a few right now. This vase particularly I love. A friend gave it to me and you can see it's a little off-center. I love that about it and I thought it would be really pretty with the Jerusalem artichoke. The Jerusalem artichoke is a species of sunflower native to eastern North America. It's sometimes used for a root vegetable. The tribes who first grew it traded it to other tribes in other regions, and it has spread greatly throughout the United States. You see, tubers persist for years after being planted, and the species expanded its range quickly. Despite its name, the Jerusalem artichoke has no relation to Jerusalem and is not a type of artichoke. The origin of its name is uncertain, but some people believe it was named with regard to the New Jerusalem the early settlers felt they were creating in the wilderness. Jerusalem artichokes are easy to cultivate. A small piece of tuber will grow if left in the ground, making the hardy plant a potential weed often reaching to heights of up to 10 feet or higher. But the wonderful thing about these artichokes, they make excellent cut flowers. So I thought that this would just be really lovely in this vase. And all I'm going to do, you can see I'm kind of measuring it, like so. Pull them all out. Just make sure that the bottom leaves have been taken off. Like that. And take a few of these off. Always have a little work bucket nearby. Clip it. And I'm not using foam. I'm just using water. And you should put some flower food into your water to make it last longer. Oh, wait a minute. I have a recipe I want to show you. This is a really easy recipe for flower food. All you really need to have is some water, some lemon juice, some bleach, and sugar. For a homemade recipe, try one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of household bleach, 
and two teaspoons of lemon juice per one quart of lukewarm water. The sugar is food, the bleach keeps it clean, and the lemon juice keeps it acidic, which helps with the uptake of water. So it's ready to use. You can keep this on hand so whenever you do make some flower pieces from your garden, it's always a good thing to use a solution like this. Can't be easier than that. Meet you back in the backyard. So, as I was saying before, you should put a little bit of that solution into every vase that you use. It'll just help prolong the life of your flowers. You can already see that this has started to shape up pretty much the way I like it. I'm going to use them all because I cut them for that particular reason. And it is standing up. Sometimes I'll use leaves or something like that if I'm just doing something in water so that I have something that it will actually be able to stand up in rather than the floral foam. Now this really is pretty in and in and itself, but I thought as I was going through the garden, some hosta flowers, which are also in bloom right now. All right, so just keep inserting. And I can see that I have a lot of nice depth perception because I'm on top of it. But if you look, so the next thing I'm gonna do is put in some nice hosta flowers. So you can see how that really, how that color really bounces off that vase. So it does make a difference in what you use for your arranging. And that's the creative end of it for me. And I'm just going to add these all around. Only rule of thumb, pleasing to the eye. We're not placing it in foam, but you're still kind of doing the same placement as you would if you were using foam. Tell me this isn't lovely. It's lovely. I think it's going to rain soon, so I'm trying to work a little quickly. I like to work outside in the garden if I can, but sometimes the weather does get to you. So we'll see if we can make it. I think that's really quite enough. The wind's picking up. Oh no, oh no. There we are. And there you have it. One great little arrangement made with a vase that inspired me. So let's look at something else that we can use. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about the marigold. Once marigold flowers are planted, they need very little in the way of care. You can greatly increase the number of blooms and the blooming time length by deadheading spent blossoms. There's a lot of folklore surrounding the marigold once thought to protect against the plague and to be effective in stopping gossip. Interestingly, the marigold can symbolize cruelty and jealousy and when used in a combination with spells, the marigold was used as an antidote for the sharp-tongued and was said to promote cheery conversations. Early Christians named the flower Mary's Gold. By the by, the blossoms make a yellow dye for fabric, so what's not to like about the flower? Well, sir, some do not like its pungent scent. One of the things that I, I use often actually as a container for flowers are cans, simple cans. You see, I sell these flowers at farmer's market and what I discovered was, you know, you, you're not gonna get a whole lot of money for these. It's, it's a time that I get to spend with my friends. Um, it's a way of making a little extra money, but you really aren't gonna make that much and you're gonna make a lot of arrangements to make what you do. So you don't want to add to the price of the flowers with the container that you use. So I have my friends save cans. And I found this year that a good base 
when I start trimming back my marigolds, because I like to plant them in with my vegetables, happens to be the marigold flower. Okay, let's put this over here. And I'm going to make a couple of really quick vases that will be very close to these, because I'm going to sell these at Farmer's Market tomorrow. So you're just going to place your marigolds in, and you can see what I'm doing. These have all been freshly cut. The flowers themselves will add to the arrangement as I go along. All right, any buds that have passed, just remove them. Do a couple. All right. And it's always good to trim your marigolds back because you can shape them. And again, if you keep your flower garden watered, they will last well up into frost. And marigolds are one of the plants that will take a light frost, not a really hard frost, but a light frost. So as you can see, what I've done is just made some girth here. So I have something that I can use. I'm going to put this bucket down for one second. If you want, you could add some sage. You get the idea. Some parsley. Whatever you have in your garden can be used as a base for this very simple arrangement. And I grow zinnias. Zinnias are colorful and long-lasting additions to the flower garden and bonus, they can be inexpensive particularly when growing them from seed. Seeds are usually sown directly into the sunny flower bed when the weather warms up sufficiently. But a word of caution, zinnias are susceptible to powdery mildew, so care should be taken to water at the base of the plant. Deadheading and consistently cutting mature blossoms throughout the summer months to use in arrangements will encourage an unlimited supply of flowers till frost, if you keep the beds warded well. Now we happen to have oh, on this zinnia, come here sweetheart, a praying mantis. I wish I don't want to scare. When I was cutting the gardens I found that he had made a little home there. So what I'm going to do is actually just put him on another flower vase over here. Okay, you can watch me too. Put you right here. There we are. Thank you, darling. So now we're going to take our zinnias. This was not cut correctly. Why, you ask? Because I can see that it was cut well below the stem that will produce another flower <laughs> had I not cut it. But that's okay. We're just going to cut that off, and you do want to remove your stems. You do that simply by going like this and dropping. So you can do these quite quickly. And you can see the ones that I have in front of me, actually, are a mixture of different flowers. I think we'll just concentrate on the one container. That being said, I'm going to take all of these, make it that much more fuller by just doing that. It couldn't be much simpler. Here we go. We'll just raise this up like so. Make sure we don't have things hanging off the edge. And they are touching the water. Very important. Let's take a couple of really pretty ones that might match our arrangement, our can. So I have depth perception. You can also see that the marigolds around it have added to, and I still have a few Jerusalem artichokes left. Look how they pop because of the yellow in the vase. Just put a few around, like so, like so. Your fruits can even be used for different types of arrangements in your garden. And don't forget those watermelons. They're great when you carve them. 
all kinds of things you can do with them. You can even write your name on it. <laughs> okay. So now you can see how the mixture of the zinnias and the Jerusalem artichoke have added to this particular arrangement. All right. Done this one before, I'm going to show it to you again because I think it's worth repeating and the flowers are in bloom. These are ice cream floats. Now you can get all kinds of containers and I collect them because I know I do like to make these. A simple Pilsner glass is really the simplest thing that you can probably get. We're going to take a hydrangea. This is the Paniculata grandiflora or the PG hydrangea. And you just, I'd like to take these little pieces off. And I might use those little pieces in arrangement, or I could dry them, because this is the one that is known for drying. And again, I'm going to kind of measure the base. And I know I need to go down quite a bit, because I want this to sit right on top of that glass. OK. We have instant float. But I'd like to give it a couple of different flavors. So you remember that hydrangea that we cut just a little while ago? that pretty blue. For long-lasting hydrangeas, cut their stems at a 45 degree angle and then submerge them in a bowl of cold water head down for one hour to help firm their petals. Let the flowers drip dry and then place the stems in warm water. Add some cut flower food to extend the life of your bouquets. The most important rule for conditioning flowers from your garden is to let them stand in a cool place out of direct sunlight in tepid water for several hours, preferably overnight. This is so perfect though. I think what I'm going to do is just take and put a couple of side scoops this way. And you can shape it. You can shape it. See what I'm doing? Like so. And if we could find one a little bit longer, make sure that it touches the water to go up again, right through all of those florets, just like so. Not quite done yet. We want to put a little cherry on top. This is a beauty. And again, this can go right on top. Don't forget the straw. Make sure that your flowers are all in the water. And there we have a little oak out of your garden. This is another one of my favorite vases. Simply white vase. Again, I'm going to put some water in there. Go around your yard, find some leaves. These are hydrangea leaves, but you're going to see that it's going to give me the balance that I need to hold the flowers. Taking off the bottom leaves before we put them in. Very pretty, very nice. And all I did before we started today, I really didn't know what I was going to make, is I just went around the yard and started picking whatever I saw that looked like it was pretty. Now this is another type of hydrangea. This is the hydrangea tardiva, which is a relative. You can see that its habit is much different. To be honest with you, I don't really like to use these in wreaths that much, but I have found that they make really pretty arrangements. Strip my branches, go all the way around, and you'll see how the look of this arrangement is changed dramatically when I add the zinnias to it. I often do mix the zinnias with other flowers. They are one of my very favorites, and they are quite easy to grow. All right, again, pretty in of itself, but watch what happens when we start putting the zinnias in. How pretty is that? It really is pretty. And you don't need a lot of them. You know, you don't need to have clusters. A half dozen to a dozen usually is enough because it's just enough to, to bring that color out. This one is spent. Actually, I should show you that. You have to be very careful when you cut these or handle them because if you bend, obviously, the stem, it's not going to be able to drink any water. And that beautiful flower has just been ruined. And I can't even put it in a vase because it's so small. So you do want to be careful of that. All right. Like 
so almost popped another one I could feel it and I'm just gonna put in a couple more and and she should be done I'm gonna save a few in case I decide to put it in another arrangement that we have And there we have this one. Nice presentation for anyone. This one I love. It's really meant to be a relish dish or something you would use at Thanksgiving. Make sure that it gets water. It's really very shallow. Some sage. and maybe a couple of other pieces. Cut the stem just a tad. And that's already pretty. Maybe for Thanksgiving, if you mounded just the sage in the container, it would be a really lovely piece to put on your dinner table. And since I do have a few PG hydrangeas that were very small, I'm going to use them in this piece, bearing in mind that they dry well too, making them super ideal for this shallow well if they don't quite reach the water. Maybe you want to go a little step further. And I really am doing this on the fly. I'm just seeing what I have in my flower bucket collection from the garden. These are Montauk daisies originating in Montauk, New York, don't you know? Hence the name. That foliage is pretty, and again, what I'm seeing is the same leaf flow, similar to the sage, to perhaps emulate a feather. And now I've built it up nicely, so maybe I want to feather it out a little bit. Asparagus fern will work for that. I love asparagus. And luckily I have that growing in my vegetable garden. So again, use your creativity and whatever you have at your fingertips will do with a fertile imagination. And yes, that pun was intended. So there you have it. Another cute little idea for the holiday to place on your dinner table. Now that I look at it, I'm thinking this might be my Easter dinner table arrangement. I chose containers that might get overlooked for one reason or another and as you can see this also has a very shallow cavity and if I were to plant it I'd probably choose a cactus or maybe a succulent and in this case using fresh cuts I decided to use sedums since they are flowering and I thought they would lend themselves very well to a windowsill arrangement. I actually plant one of my window boxes with this particular type of sedum and I do that because I very rarely get out there to water it. You see sedums will flourish in full sun with very little water. I'm actually using this as something that will flow over the edge before I put in the other sedum. This particular variety of sedum is called Autumn Joy. So again, this container is very shallow. So all I'm going to do is cut shorter stems and just tuck. I love flowers and anytime I can bring the outdoors in it's a bonus so as you can see anyone can extend in a very simple way the beauty of any season. I've shown this one before but I think it bears repeating given the subject of this show. You can just take any old jar and cover it by using a fabric square you have cut with pinking shears and then a piece of wire twisting it tightly at the mouth of the jar and then simply ending it with a curly cue making that by wrapping the tips of the wire around a pencil and pulling it out. I've even added pins to these homemade containers to make it a little more decorative. And there you have it. 
recycled spaghetti sauce jars, all dressed and ready to go to farmer's market. You see these little novelty things around Halloween. This would be a great centerpiece. Just going to work your piece until you've come to something that's pleasing to the eye. And there you have a little Halloween festive piece. For any holiday, you can dress up the table or the entranceway or bring a little gift to a neighbor right from the fruits of your garden. That being said and done, we part until we meet again. See you next time here in Emily's Garden. I made the mistake of trying to film two separate, fairly elaborate episodes of Emily's Garden in one day. And this is about where I started to get pretty tired. I can't snap with this finger. Can you do that? I can't do both. I have. <laughs> I'm not into this. What? What do you have? Nothing. Originally, I decided to make a gallon of homemade flour food instead of the quart volume, adjusting the recipe accordingly. Only thing is, I forgot to compensate for water displacement. Watch this. Three. <laughs> I have to do this again, you know. This is the magic of television, four. <laughs> All right, Steve, I need you. Take this and dump some of this out, and I am going to have to do it again. Right here, thunder. <laughs> <laughs>